Good morning, British Isles Council of Prophets, uh, family and friends around the world in YouTube land and Facebook land. How are you all this morning? Type in the comments, give us the thumbs up if you are well and uh, thumbs down if you need us to release healing prayers to you. Uh, let's have emoji communication this morning in the comments. <laughs> and uh, what well, we try to do slightly ba better communication uh, uh, as we broadcast to you. Do tell us where you're from. Do you know isolated lonely prophets are not healthy prophets? There's a word of the Lord. So don't leave us isolated and lonely. Uh, make sure you tell us where you are from. And actually, we already see that that thumbs down. And we do just agree that if you are coming on to the comments and it is a thumbs down because you need healing, we speak life to you yes. right now in yes. Jesus' yes. name. Okay. Well, I am joined by a croaky voice. I apologize. And um, I need some cough sweets. Uh, but... More importantly, can we just have a moment of are we not the most blessed nation to have men on the screen of the caliber of the two that you are seeing right now? <laughs> the nation is in good hands because we have men of the stature of Mark Birch Macon and Simon Breaker. Gentlemen, you make all our lives wondrously better and you care for us well and your prayers and your words of accuracy from God hold us. How are you men today? Go on, Simon. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm croaking with you, Emma. <laughs> I've yes. nearly got my voice back, but it's not there yet. So, um, but I'm good otherwise. You're good. You're good in spirit, but your throat is rough. Okay, Mark, how are you, my friend? Mark, very well. Um, already, Emma, from what you've been saying, I've got fire in my belly. So thank you for, uh, for firing <laughs> us up. Come on, come on. Okay, Mark. Now, Mark, we know you, prophet in Newcastle region, um, uh, running ministries, professor of, uh, no, you're the dean of the university. Dean, dean, well, I was Dean of Business Development, yeah, but I'm a professor as well. You're a professor. Yes, I never yeah. know which which salute to give to you with all your titles. <laughs> but anyway, hit me with the word of the Lord, Mark. <laughs> well, good morning, everyone. I mean, obviously, 2022, we've been listening to a lot of the broadcasts. Thank you, Emma, for, for just the, the transition, you know, helping us through the transition every morning for, for, for the 10 minutes you've been doing. That's been great. And obviously, you've been talking about Harvest. You know, this is a year of harvest, reformation, opening, closing doors. So there's a transition. So even before, you know, what's happened with the Queen's death and everything else and the nation transition, the nation, we've all been talking about this is a year of transition and the transition is happening in a very stark way. Isn't and it? so as we go through that transition, the Lord's given me this morning um, the, the verses from Isaiah 28, 23 to 29. So there's quite a lot. And I'm not going to read it just because of time, but I'm going to pick out a few verses so please do read 23 to 29 just to ensure that i'm not taking it out of context please um so and, and and in that it says you know listen and hear my voice pay attention hear what i say and so in verse 24 it says when a farmer plows for planting does he plow continually does he keep breaking up and working the soil well it's a rhetorical question because actually the answer is clearly not <laughs> the farmer doesn't do the same thing again and again and again and again, you know, Very because good. actually you could say, you know, if you apply to our own lives, if we're good at something, we just keep on doing it and doing it and doing it. It's our party trick. All right. But actually the season has moved on. Transition has moved on. We need to actually have different tools for different seasons. And yet we're saying to everyone, hey, everybody, I'm a great, you know, plower. I just keep on plowing. This is what I do. All right. The, the reason why we shouldn't keep on doing the same thing when actually we're supposed to be transitioning is because we never get on to make the bread. Yeah. All right. Wow. We need to be, you know, that Jesus is, a, is, is, our, is the bread of life. All right. We need to be bread for other people. We need to be bread for ourselves, for our families, for our influences. But we need to actually have bread for others. In other words, strategies, everything else. So the the the. The passage goes on. It talks about caraways not threshed with the sledge, nor the wheel of a cart rolled over cumin. All right. You, I do some work on why that's not the right thing. So you've got to use the proper instrument and the proper procedure at the proper time to accomplish the purpose of transition. So you get on to make the bread. And in verse 28, it says grain must be ground to make the bread. 
So so don't go on threshing it forever. All right. Now that's that. I mean, that's a few. Isn't isn't the second part of that a futile phrase? Don't go on threshing it forever. You know, there's kind of a lot of people out there kind of threshing around thinking I'm, you know, I'm actually in a place of transition, confusion. I don't want to do. So I'll just go on, keep on doing the same thing harder. Threshing yeah. around. All right. So actually, you know, where do we get the wisdom from? Verse 29 says, all this comes from the Lord Almighty, whose plan is wonderful. All right. We need to know that this morning. Whose plan is wonderful and whose wisdom is magnificent. Wisdom is one of the seven spirits of God in Isaiah 11. So, so we need to kind of almost like stop what you're doing right now. You've been doing it well. Stop it now. If God is saying stop it, if you're threshing and you should be making bread, go on and actually ground it to make bread, all right, the grain to make bread. What is bread in our lives? Bread, the bread, I, I mean, Jesus is the bread of life to flatten the strife, the Midianites, all right, in, in our land, you know, the old Gideon story. But it's the ability to feed others in times of uncertainty, strategies, ideas, Come reconciliation of people, families, communities, bringing nations together. Recognize what the bread is and what is the seed. And do not give people seed when you should be giving them bread. And do not plant bread when you should be planting the seed. In other words, know the time. Yeah, exactly. In other words, no, the time is what you're saying to us. But what I love and let me just pull it out, Mark, because when you said the word strategy, the day of strategy, you could feel the glory of God over that. And I just want to pray. Come on. You, you know what? Give me some open hand emojis in the comments. We're on emoji conversations today. I think that might look like a hands up. Why am I asking you to do that? It's a sign of I open my hand. You're not high fiving me as lovely as that might be. But God burn the wrong strategy off my hands. Yeah, Here I put my open hands in the comment. Burn the wrong strategy out. And we're just going to, as you put your hands up, that's a way of saying, God, I give you permission to burn the wrong strategy out. Why? Because, Mark, I think in what you're saying is that we go from glory to glory. We go strategy to strategy. We go faith to faith. We keep climbing up the mountain of the Lord into greater wisdom, greater understanding, greater application, greater capability, greater capacity for the glory of God. And the problem right now is that the zeitgeist, the spirit of the age, the spirit that is hovering since the queen has died, is the spirit of demonic chaos. And yeah. Satan loves you to go chaos to chaos to chaos to chaos to chaos to chaos to chaos and he's saying look i'm gonna take you your, your queen is gonna go uh, like choose my words your queen's gonna go and there's gonna be the reign of the chaos of satan and really what you're saying this morning is mark no there's gonna be the reign of the strategy of god but yeah, actually, you've got to be brave enough. To, uh, I love all your hands up to say, God, if I've got the wrong strategy, you need to help me out here in it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I yeah. mean, actually, Mark, what I kind of feel like you're saying, and please, I hope this is not putting words in your mouth, is God hurt me if I'm doing the wrong thing. Yeah, help. Well, it's like help me to it. stop it. It's like God saying, "Stop it, stop it now." You know, in a very kind way, but actually, stop it now because actually, um, it's it's you're not going to get anywhere by doing the same thing with the same strategy harder. All right, it isn't going to work. It isn't going to work. It's almost like thing. breaking a vicious cycle. You know, when a vicious cycle goes round and round, you yeah. need to break it. Yeah. Okay, Woo. brilliant. Simon, pick it up. Yeah. Yeah, just you heard me say, I, I you, we've all, and, and probably we all, whether we do it externally or internally, roll our eyes to the gods doing a new thing prophecy, which just drives me flipping crazy <laughs> because so often what the new thing is is the old thing done with more enthusiasm. <laughs> you can feel, you yes. know, people are yes. in the room and they're like, oh. yeah. And somebody, come on! And everybody gets a fresh infilling of not even the spirit of God, but maybe some adrenaline. And then it suddenly I'm going to re-engage. And how do you know the difference between it being adrenaline and it being the spirit of God? I want to say when it's adrenaline, it burns out. When it's the spirit yeah. of God, it burns up. 
it yes. advances and keeps going. And, and I think we go through these spates because there's not sustained momentum. And the reason why there's not sustained momentum is because there's not sustained engagement with God, who is the one who has the momentum. And what yes. happens is you engage with the activity. And obviously, I was just while you were talking, Mark, we used to have a, well, I mean, we are talking years back. I think what Joe and I were in our 20s and we had a, an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our lounge. And we had no, we, we knew even less than we know now. And, and it was packed. And there was like, can you sing in tongues? Can you not sing in tongues? Well, let's have a go and see what happens. And there's all this wonderful stuff going on. And more and more people were coming in. And then the Lord said, it's time to stop that. What's my point? We did do it, but the argument I had with the Lord was, but this is really good, Lord. This is really good. And the Lord said to me, Simon, I don't take you from failure to success. I take you from glory to glory. Yeah. yeah. And I think sometimes we think, well, when you transition, what needs to happen is the current thing needs to stop working to justify you to step into the next thing. But it's entirely possible to continue to engage in something and see some measure of fruit, but yeah. not see the fullness because you're just just operating in a biblical principle and biblical principles work. But is it a current principle? Is it in yeah. season? And that yeah. is so important right now for us to be in step with the Holy Spirit and just bouncing off what you said there, Mark, about bread. What did Jesus say bread was? He said, my bread is to do the will of the one who sent me. That's yeah. the issue that we're, 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 his voice is where we're living from. And we are, we're, we're functioning with him, not on the other stuff. Very good. So, I mean, Mark, you're feeling the weight around the word new strategies. Simon, yeah. you're talking about this sense of the currentness of where we need to be. So people who are watching right now, hear, the, hear where the weight is of God around concepts of strategy and around concepts of the current strategy versus the old strategy. Can I just say this? God is calling you into your places for stewarding nation and for stewarding yeah. national transformation and for stewarding national breakthrough. No longer are you playing little games, uh, you know, about, oh, my neighbor or, oh, my friend. It is that sense that God says, as you come up and you are thinking, maybe for the first time for some of you, what is a national strategy? What is a current word? What is a strategy that thinks about the turning of my city? Or what is the way I need to pray or think or act or business I need to birth? And where does that need to be geographically so that it turns things more than just for me and my family, but for a region? Where do I need to go? geographically where do I need to live okay so what God is doing right now and, and you need to hear this is he is shifting you as his people on mass into the dynamic of thinking region territory and spacious place massive transformation you know the forcing back of mm. whole squadrons of the enemy the planting of the righteous in the right place because because of the righteous the city is blessed okay so you and i are in the most dynamically brilliant and yet incredibly uncomfortable place because where you live and what you do and how you do it is no longer just about your own four walls mm -hmm. it is yeah. now about the na the nation and so what happens is god has made us all kings and queens okay you you, you are world lords you are landlords of the earth you are those who uh, you know mm -hmm. are to have dominion and, and and subdue and fulfill and the point of it is you have lived in a small coffin and when you agree, I mean, Simon, you, you need to help us out in, in even the language purge. But when we agree in with language about our own ineptitude or smallness, we allow Satan into our living rooms to coffinize us, to lock us in a coffin where we have national anointings, but impotent outworkings 
You, oh, mm -hmm. I'm preaching. Sorry, I need to mm -hmm. stop because you guys need to speak. We we have national anointings coffinized in our living rooms. Uh. Oh, and the that. Lord is breaking the the local coffin off you and saying, don't you see, you've always had a national anointing. Right, help me out. Because really what we're doing here is seeing a replacement of where the people of God sit in the life of the nation. Come on. I mean, what I've got written down here, I'll just read out what, what I what I wrote is the fact that um, uh, um, it was talking thing about the legacy of, you know, we were talking about, you know, at the minute with with legacy, with the queen, with everything else. It's, it's almost like what imprint. Another word for, for legacy is imprint. What imprint are we leaving on the on the on the land, on the world, in people's lives, in nations? Yeah. You know, and and scripture talks about Jesus being the perfect imprint of his father's essence. Yeah, very good. So what imprint are we leaving on the world? And what imprint is it's almost like God has for us in the nation? Um, yeah. I'm, you know, yeah. I mean, you know yeah. me, you know me, Simon, you know me, Emma. I'm I, you know, I'm I'm a regular guy placed in a in, in different places. Um, and actually I find myself there. And actually, I think actually I've got every right to be there because I'm a son of the living God. Oh, I don't come on. I don't shrink away from it, you know. And and actually, I could actually believe the enemy and say, well, Mark, you know, it's this, you've come from this background, you've got this, you've got this. But, you know, um, so so as we say yes to God, as we say yes to what you've been urging us to do, Emma, in the sense that, you know, I wrote, we are royalty. We're yeah. influencers as children of the living God. Yes. So when, you know, so when I find myself in the, with people from the Security Council of the United Nations about 10 years ago in New York, I didn't think I don't deserve to be there. I have nothing to offer. I think God put me there. I'm a son. I yes. have something to say. And I said it. And I got invited back again and again and again. All right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because I had every right to be there because I'm a son that, you know, because actually my imprint for that season was on that, 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 that an individual in the Security Council, if that makes sense. And that's what you're saying, yeah. Emma, is the fact that we can shrink from that, or we can step into actually what we're, you know, that 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 imprint of what God is urging us right now, rather than shrinking back. Simon, you, I think you've got... Yeah, I mean, and, and, and Simon, come in, because we, if we do not, in other words, if we do not stand where we are today, and our first word is the coffin that is built around me, I push it down and I will not receive my life to be lived in that way in a coffin. That is your number one prayer today um, because you can see it all round about you. And then you are jolly well going to have to start to pray some things that are national, Simon. Do you know what's really surprising about a coffin? I think I can probably say something online right now, which probably nobody else can say. I've laid in a coffin. What? Um, the reason I laid in a coffin is because we did a preach, a street preach, and I was carried in a coffin. I won't bother with you with the full story of it right now. But is this when you were saved or not saved? This is when we were down in Horsham. We did an evangelistic outreach, and I was carried oh, right. through, okay, okay. through the city right. centre in a coffin, and I jumped out of it and preached. Um, but that's another story. But here's the thing. They're really comfy. I don't know why no. they need because you're dead. But the point of it is, actually, they're very comfortable. And, and, and I remember laying in it thinking, hey, this is, this is quite comfortable, this is. And the point is, is this, why do people stay in these places? It's because it's comfortable. Fair enough. Yeah, that yeah, is true. the reason. It's because it's comfortable. And then if you say, I like being made uncomfortable, you are quite frankly lying. Really? I mean, none of us like it, but we, but we know, or at least our flesh doesn't like being made un uncomfortable, but we need to begin to operate in a different way. And, 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 you know, I feel like we're occupying some space right now with, with some of our language that, that almost reinforces that position. 
and 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 justifies our lack of power, justifies yeah. our lack of experience. It's like I'm going to sing this because, or I'm going to do this. I'm going to say this because it kind of puts me in a place of comfort that it's okay. It's not okay yeah. until we get to the place <laughs> right now. Listen, it is not okay that my son held a teenage girl a matter of days ago who flung herself in front of a bus who had died. That is not okay. That's not okay. Hmm. It's not okay that there are people dying of cancer. It's not okay yes. that we've got people falling into drug addiction and all the rest of it. And until we, as God's people, come to the place that we say, it's not okay, you cannot change it. I was with a minister in India. He said this, India, he said this to me, what you tolerate, you can't change. Yeah. And mm. we tolerate mm. a lot. Yeah. And we even create theology to justify powerlessness. We create language to justify God's absence. And we need yeah. to shift from managing to the place of decree. And I heard the spirit of the Lord say this while Emma was talking. I'm shifting the prophet's mantle where the emphasis has been on the individual, I'm shifting it to national, regional, church. And, yeah. and, and I found in myself a reluctance to prophesy over the individual. And I thought, Lord, what's going on? I feel like I'm not doing my job. And he yeah. says, the mantle has shifted and you need to begin to decree. And I want to say this, the absence of decree into region and nation has left a vacuum to give the enemy increased space for activity and if the prophets are not decreeing there you can be jolly well sure that the enemy will be and we need to step into that space and we need to begin to decree the media's been decreeing fear and death and and recession and and god knows what else we as god's prophets and god's church need to occupy that space and begin to speak some things that make our unbelief feel uncomfortable but bring delight to the father Wow. And I'm just going to, uh, very strong, come back to you in, in a moment, Mark Birch making, but that sense of, as you, you touched on our language that keeps us small. Yep. Can I just say that when we talk about church, obviously the word ecclesia, we, and you know, we preached this for years and um, right back, you know, uh, in the early, you know, 2012, 2013, 14, we were preaching about the ecclesia, you know, which we use as the word church and, um, the concept of local church is like saying two opposite words. Yes. To, to say local church is like putting together words that don't go together. A and vegan so, beef burger. Like what? <laughs> a vegan beef burger. Oh. <laughs> local church is the same as a vegan beef burger. Now we're going to offend everybody. <laughs> <laughs> it is that sense that do you have foots, feet on the grind? Yes. And do you have a remit literally on your piece of soil in your locality? Of course you do. Of course you do. But the more you say local church, local church, local church, local church, local church, is uh, it's almost like the curse where you, you make the mindset of ruling and reigning so small that actually sometimes I have to think about the decree that holds the land mass Come and on. that also holds my locality. Come on. That actually God is in the parable of the talents. He wants to reward you with cities. The aim is not more seed. It's not like I give you seed, you invest it and have more seed. No, when you are trustworthy, he gives you cities. So yeah. it is that sense in that parable that he's saying, why will you not decree things for cities and regions? And by default, it has an impact in your locality. And, and really what we're doing is when the nation is in transition and you and I are terrified of national level decrees. You and I are terrified that we might trigger a principality. And can I say, we have got to say, thank you, Jesus, I get to trigger a principality. Come on. Yeah. And the tell it what to church. do. The purpose of the church, what did Paul say? That God's intent was that through the church, 
the multifaceted wisdom of God should be demonstrated to politicians and local church, no, to principalities and powers, that it should be revealed. And we need to recognize our purpose first and foremost is to govern in the spirit realm, not to seek to bring change through the natural realm. There has got to be a shift in our thing, even from a prayer perspective. There's so much prayer that's focused on. We'll see change happen if we can change it in the natural. It's in the spirit realm that things shift. That's yeah. where it shifts. And you might have the most weird demonically possessed politician in position but if the church is governing in the spirit realm it don't make a hill of beans yeah 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 mark quick button quick button we're on a roll <laughs> <laughs> i just think i i love it and, and 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 what you're talking about is breaking that that again that vicious cycle isn't it of of, of smallness yes of, but also of doing the same thing come on and, ex and calling it progress, calling it new, calling it the new thing, all right? So we're breaking out of that vicious cycle. And, and actually also, as we move into an, an, a national voice, as God gives us cities, all right, as, as we've said yes to God to that this morning. So when people have been listening to you, Emma, to you, Simon, today, they're saying, yep, yeah, okay, give me cities, give me, you know, so you give God your yes. What yes. is the one thing? Right, so you yielded to God's uh, will, purpose, plans this morning. What is the thing that will make you unyielding, according to Scripture? Offence. All right, so Proverbs 18, 19, it says, an offended person is more unyielding than a fortified city. An wow. offence is the word scandal on, which is a bait and a trap. All right? Sorry, give us that Scripture again, because we need to memorize yeah. that one. <laughs> Okay, Proverbs 18, verse 19 says, an offended person is more unyielding than a fortified city. And the root word there is scandal on or, or a bait and a trap. In other words, offense makes us un, unyielding. So if we want to yield to God to see the yield, which is what we're talking about. Yeah. What is the one thing that will make us unyielding? Offense. So actually, as we say yes to God, to move into these, you know, uh, reward cities, everything else, the, the enemy will try and bait us into a trap of offense. And actually, we just should see it coming and say, OK, I overlooked that. I let that one fly by because we're refusing to be drawn into that offense because that will take us off track to what God's plan has put in our hearts this morning. As we've said yes to God, as we've yeah. yielded to God, we're going to see that yield in our nation, which is our inheritance. Can I just give, very good, can I just give you some top tips on how to pray in, in this? Because, you know, you can have us run and and enjoy our interactions, but actually you, you need some words in your mouth. So, for example, you are literally sitting in a small church. You would have previously called that a local church. Don't bother yourself, okay? It's, it is a small church. Now, you want to feed the people in that church that is a good heart because we want to, you know, be Jesus' hands and feet and feed and clothes and nurture, okay? So, oh God, I need food in my food bank for this locality. No, okay? Why? Because when you only ever pray about your small place, you get disproportionately attached to it in a way that will lead you to protectionism of it, defense of it you will not know when its time has come and gone you will feel elitist about it because you have sown all your prayers into a, in a possessive way wrongly to where you are locally okay so what you start to pray is god can you start to put into the hands of every church the food that they need to feed this city God, can you put into the hands of every saint in the nation the property that they need to own? God, I'm not just asking for my property. God, I'm asking for everybody's property. And in that, you actually pray yourself out of, as somebody says, um, orphan spirit, but you pray yourself out of elitism, separatism, siloing away, denominationalism, you know, protectionism, you pray yourself into the place 
where your contention is for the greatness of the kingdom and the greatness of every Christian uh, 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 on the shores of this nation. So you start where you are and you push the coffin of your smallness. And even though you might be praying just about, we need to feed people today, you make sure that that prayer has a wider remit to safeguard the nation. Guys, you want to comment on that? Very practical. I I just, uh, we do really well to listen to Jesus. When Jesus told us to pray, he didn't say, and when you pray, pray in my house as it is in heaven. He said, on earth as it is in heaven. Come on! Give us. Give who? Who is the us He's talking about the earth. Now swing over to the Apostle Paul. Nearly every single one of Paul's prayers. There's very few prayers where he says, pray for me. 99.9% of that time. When he says, I pray for you, he's talking about Ephesus. He's talking about Colossae. He's talking about the Philippians. He's talking about the Romans. He's talking about entire regions. And then Jesus In John 17, he says, I don't only pray for them, but I also pray for those who will believe. Jesus prayed for the entire, everybody. And we pray little, tiny, small prayers. And we need, the reason why we pray small prayers maybe is because we have a tiny God. And we feel like we might need to help him a bit and give him something that's a little bit more attainable. Go on, Emma. No, I know I'm so excited. excited. Mark, you need to just keep talking. And I tell you why. Look, we did this amazing conference last weekend. There are loads of people there. The jealousy from Scottish church leaders that I got online was cruel. Can I tell you, you fools? I mean, seriously, you fools. (laughs) Can I tell you this? Where I break through, I am breaking through for all of you. Because I believe in all of us winning, okay? So don't you dare go into jealous, small-minded mode and call the prophets performers, okay? No, 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 no. Start to understand that actually where, where, where you break through i break through where i break through you break through we are the kingdom of god and so the prayers are large prayers because we are dragging the entirety of the army of god with us through to be a, a roaring success in their victory over satan come on Come on. Sorry, that was and, Thank you. And and actually, Simon Wood did have a a, a, a a scripture. Simon, what was the scripture from Ecclesiastes about the axe and the sharp? And then I'll just make a comment. Just what was yeah, it? Ecclesi- Ecclesiastes ten ten says this is the if the axe is dull, which means blunt, much work is needed. It says, but but success is found through wisdom. OK, so wisdom. So coming back to that passage in, in, in Isaiah 28 and in, in verse 29, it says, you know, all this, what, he, what God was saying through Isaiah um, comes from God, whose wisdom is magnificent. So as we move into all the areas that Simon and, and Emma were talking about in terms of influence, in terms of affecting nations, governments, we, you know, like re- begin to receive the solution. All right. Yes. Begin to receive the strategy, begin to receive the ministry of reconciliation, because we have that already. All right. And in doing that, what happens? We become sharp. Yes. We become sharp. So if we keep on doing the same thing, but harder, if we're dull, we're actually not actually getting sharp. We're just making ourselves more dull. All right. Because it's because that's what was making us dull. So if we want to be sharp, which is actually what we're wanting to be, not only for ourselves through the breakthrough, but to cut through for others, where others may see something really impenetrable, we cut through on behalf of others because of that axe that Sam was talking about in Ecclesiastes. We actually then become sharp for others so that others can then see the principles that they can step through, break that vicious cycle of smallness, of dullness, and then step through into that which God has for them in their sphere of influence, which will keep them sharp and encourage others to be sharp in themselves. It's almost like a chain reaction of sharpness that as we start, it becomes a chain reaction of sharpness in others and this breakthrough, this collective breakthrough in the nation. I think when I watch a denomination or a church 
do something really well, my first response is just thank goodness somebody cool. got there. I mean, yeah. thank goodness somebody got there. Because if somebody else got there, they've opened something for you know me to get there where I actually couldn't. And actually, maybe they had the anointing that I didn't have, no, you know, I, I, that, that because we don't all have everything, you know, that, that sense we have our specialization. And actually, my goodness, you're doing an amazing job of what you're doing over there, more par to you. You know, you go and be brilliant at that because the better you are at that, the better it is for all of us. You know, so it, it is that sense of really, what are we saying today? Because we've gone so over time. Up, 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 up. And think the blessing of nations, the contention for nations. Don't get stuck in the curses of my local church, my local church, my local church, my local church. Give your prayers to the nation. Give your money even outside of your own walls so that we all come up to rule and reign in the nation. Right, okay, lots of ground covered. We love you. It's Friday. I'm away to pack a house. And I don't know, what are you guys up to this weekend? Well, actually, we've got one day in Leicester and then we're off down to London for a prophetic event with Prefi and Rakesh. Of course you are. Blessings on it. Oh, come on. That's what we want to say from like a prophetic center up north to a prophetic center in London. You find a glory of God, Simon Breaker, down there with Prefi that I have never found because that blesses all of us. I'm going to be in London next week, Simon. So we should we should meet up. I'm in various places, but I'm actually speaking at BAFTA, which I don't understand, you know, but that's uh, anyway, I'm not an actor, but maybe people think I am. But anyway, it's... <laughs> <laughs> right to BAFTA. What? I, BAFTA, you know the acting place. It's just yes, a venue, yes, yes. but I, I quite like. Oh, the BAFTA. I thought well, you meant you were speaking venue. at the BAFTAs. I'm going. No, I'm not speaking at the BAFTAs. What? It's just the BAFTAs <laughs> place. I quite like the fact that you know um, that that the, everybody thinks that uh, you know I, I should be I should be an actor somewhere in a film because uh, you know. But anyway, I just like the fact I'm speaking at the venue, so we should meet up. <laughs> Right, right. And can I just ask, Mark, how, how are you doing with cancer cures? Just give us a, a, a live update. Good, good, good. So we're going well. We formed a, a, a new uh, spin-out company, which has been trading for six, seven weeks. So we're actually, um, hopefully that will accelerate the process because we need to accelerate it. So we've got some great um, solutions. We just need to speed things up. We just, ble so for those of you who don't know, Mark actually in his professor deanship, lordship, wherever it is in the lordship. university, <laughs> this lordship is working on a cancer breakthrough and uh, with his uh, research lab and team there. Mark, we just cheer you on. Come on, Thank come on, my friend, get that cancer breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. To the glory, it'll be to the glory of God. Right, I was due on another call 10 minutes ago. I'm going to love you and we'll see you all on Monday. See you later.